Okay, we are going to look at the relationship between the variable input, which is labor, and output. Um, the capital input is fixed and is not in this graph. The fixed capital input is what dictates that this is the short run, so we are going to look at the short run production function. You have one control here. You can affect the labor input. You can lower it or raise it. Uh, at low levels of labor, let's show this, output rises at an increasing rate. And what I mean by that, if you look at this line from the origin to the curve, the slope of this is the average product of labor, or sometimes labor productivity. The average product is rising at low levels of output. The explanation for why the average product rises is division of labor. So labor gets more productive as you increase the amount of labor because you can divide up the tasks. Eventually, you reach a point where you've exploited the division of labor, then the average product starts to fall, and it falls because of congestion effects. The fact that the average product falls is called the law of diminishing returns. So the law of diminishing returns is a result of congestion effects. And actually, I have in the curve here that the total product starts to fall eventually because of congestion effects. The workers just get in each other's way. Um, I didn't say this yet, but this other line here, which is the slope of the tangent, which is the tangent line, its slope is the marginal product. Um, and so now we want to look directly at the relationship between average product and marginal product. So let's do that by scrolling down here. I'm not going to vary the labor input. I'm just going to explain these curves. The marginal product curve is in red. The average product curve is in blue. The average product, as we said, first rises, reaches a max, and then starts to fall. Where the average product is rising, the marginal product curve is above the average product. Where the marginal product is falling, excuse me, where the average product is falling, the marginal product is below the average product. And when the average product is at its maximum, the marginal product equals the average product. So that's the relationship between those two curves. We can look at this algebraically. So let's take a look at the algebra. and Let me move this over a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Um, here I have the average of n numbers, x1 through xn, and I divide by n. I can rewrite the first n minus 1 numbers as n minus 1 times them divided by n minus 1. Then there's the last number, xn, divide the whole thing by n. So I've just rewritten this a little bit. Now I'm going to regroup terms. So I have n minus 1 over n times the average of the first n minus 1 numbers plus 1 over n times that last number. And so this is the weighted average of the average of the first n minus 1 numbers and the last number where the weights are n minus 1 over n and 1 over n. And from this you can conclude that this average will be bigger than the average of the first n minus 1 numbers if xn is bigger than the average of the first n minus 1 numbers. This average will stay constant, will not change going from n minus 1 numbers to n numbers if xn equals the average of the first n minus 1 numbers. And this average will go down if xn is less than the average of the first n minus 1 numbers. So that explains the relationship between the marginal and the average curve over here.